Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today, we're going to be continuing our Women in Engineering series, and we're really looking forward to having a conversation with Krista Bayo, who is the Mid-Atlantic Sales Manager at Siemens. So welcome, Krista. Thank you. Looking forward to talking with you. Hope you're doing well today. Yes, I'm doing great. How about you? Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful day in North Carolina, so we can't complain here, and really excited about this series, the Women in Engineering, and all the wonderful guests and, and talking with you, just hearing your story. So I'm excited for uh, what you're going to bring for our listeners. And we'd love to start these off just by giving our listeners uh, an idea about your journey and how you got to the, to the role that you're in now. Sure. So a little bit about my journey and where I'm at. I graduated from West Virginia University with an industrial engineering degree and immediately went to work for Eaton Corporation on their LDP or Leadership Development Program for sales. I moved a few times with Eaton and was a sales engineer for several years with them. I then took a role uh, as a distributor specialist for industrial control, sensor safety, and connectivity uh, at Rexel, and I did that for several years as well. Um, I then had the opportunity to go back to Eaton where I was uh, in the data center segment. So in customer facing sales, but in the data center segment. While doing that role, I helped start a private school as a passion project on the side. This took several years, but after getting the Small Business Association funding, uh, I decided to quit corporate America and uh, start my own business around business development through branding value, marketing, and social media marketing, which is very different from my initial you know, career. I took a lot of lessons from what I'd learned at the various companies and had a successful, my, my own successful business for four years. But as you know, I focused, we started the school and as uh, the school got full and there was a waiting list, there wasn't as much of a need for marketing. And so I really thought hard about what did I love? What did I love to do? And I found the account manager role with Siemens uh, for Eastern North Carolina. So I next went back to Siemens, went back into industrial sales, calling on OEMs, end users, integrators, and uh, I did that role successfully and then was promoted into the area sales manager role about a year ago. So now I've got the Mid-Atlantic, so Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Awesome. Thank you so much, Krista, for walking us through that. So you're a West Virginia Mountaineer, huh? I am a West Virginia Mountaineer. Nice, nice. Good college. I bet you had a fun time there. <laughs> I did. It was. I, w- I was born and raised in West Virginia, so a lot of love for the state. Did have a very good time. <laughs> very good. That's a lot of good good sports at that school, too, so I'm sure you had a, a lot to cheer for. Hopefully, hopefully, we get back to sports at some time in the future, and you know, but... Uh, Hey, your background. So you went manufacturing. I'll make sure I get this right. Manufacturing, sure. distributor, uh, where you had that data center focus. Then you kind of took that the, the side step and you did the private school, which sounds like an amazing project. Maybe we can talk about that more later as well. And, and with the marketing director. So what made you shift to the marketing? What what caught your eye there? So it was it was a need that the school had, and they were trying to develop the business. Um, and marketing is a huge part of, of doing a startup. And so I always have had a passion for, I have a creative side and I have a passion for, for marketing and, and social media and, you know, the, just the creative side of things. And I thought, what a great, you know, what a great time to be able to kind of take a pause on my career and and do my own startup marketing company. That is awesome. I mean, hats off to you on the creative piece. I'm, I'm there with you with the engineering background, but really, I enjoy the strategic thinking, the creativity. That's the problem. I mean, that led led us to where we're talking here on this podcast. And, you know, eco ask why is, you know, just a bit out of the box thinking. It sounds like you enjoy that as well. Absolutely, I, I love I love the creative aspect of things for sure. Very it's a great cool. outlet. No <laughs> doubt, no doubt. So I mean, now you're in the you know, and I think where you're at now, Mid Atlantic. So what states was that that you you oversee now? 
Sure. So I have uh, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Okay, cool. So across those states, are you seeing any similarities and challenges that uh, that industry may be facing in the future? Sure. I mean, you know, the first challenge that that jumps straight out is is everything that's been uh, going on with COVID. So I'm in sales, and our organization has had to get really creative to reach new and existing customers over the past several months. And so if COVID continues, it'll be interesting to see how it shapes organizations because of the way that that we sell and, and we're going to have to change. Face-to-face interactions are already greatly reduced, um, but we're going to need to develop better skills uh, digitally. And then we're going to be networking differently. So some companies may also decide uh, to invest more in digital marketing, I could see. I mean, that's, that's the challenge. I mean, we're sales organization, we have a lot of sales team that we work with as well. And it's so hard to get on site now at certain, at certain industry segments. And, you know, I think the face of that, the B2B is really changing, you know, every day and, and you're seeing it as well. So, I mean, when you talk about digital and networking, anything specific that, that you, that you really zoning in on right now? Yeah, we're just finding a lot of different ways to reach customers. A lot of customers are working remotely or maybe not in the plan. So we're, you know, everyone's utilizing LinkedIn, as I'm sure most other companies are a great deal. We've also been using a lot of prospecting tools to find new customers during this time and some AI intelligent prospecting tools that have helped us, you know, find new opportunities and connect with new customers during this time. Right. Yeah. I mean, you definitely have to think outside the box and, you know, and one thing, Krista, with the, the, the women engineering series that we're doing here, we're really trying to inspire. So for the women that are mm-hmm. listening right now, you know, to any advice you would give about this industry specifically? I would say the industry is extremely interesting and it's always changing. So you've always got a chance you know, to do special projects and, and learn more. Technology is always progressing and there's always opportunities for learning and growth. So we absolutely need more women in the industry. So I'd encourage uh, anyone who's listening to consider, you know, undergraduate degrees in engineering or STEM fields. But I would say first and foremost, you know, study what interests you and what you're passionate about. Because if you focus on what you're passionate about and what you're interested in, you'll have a much a much better career and it'll be a lot more enjoyable day to day. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you have to focus on what interests you, but definitely I think this is oftentimes it's over overlooked on how, how changing, how much it evolves the industry that we're in. Cause if you just think back 10 years ago to the technology that we're selling now and, and promoting now supporting customers. Now it's, it's, it's night and day. And just imagine 10 years from now where we're going to be, you know, I mean, it's, it's, Absolutely. It's really cool stuff out there. And, you know, as, as uh, a speaker on this topic as well, are there some obstacles that you, that you would face or that potential women would face if they are coming into this industry and things you'd like to share? Sure. I don't, I don't think there's anything s- specific. I think the biggest thing uh, coming into the industry or a small challenge, it's not a challenge. It's just something to be aware of is that there aren't a lot of us. So when you're looking around for examples um, you don't have a ton of that. Um, only 14% of top leadership and companies are women, and that percentage has not changed for the past 10 years. So in the middle of organizations as well, I see a lack of women leaders as well. So if you're looking for a female mentor or peers to rely on, and you're a woman coming into this field, you may not be able to get that from a woman. Almost all of my mentors throughout my career have have predominantly been men, but Overall, I think you're going to have, you know, run into the same obstacles that a man would, but there's just less of us in the industry. No doubt. And we're definitely trying to change that and just bring awareness to this topic because it's such a great opportunity f- for others to join. And uh, we, we were speaking with other guests about, you know, certain conferences and things like that that they go to and just the disparity that's there. And I'm sure you've, you've seen that as well. Yes, absolutely. They're, they're, there aren't a lot of women, um, but hopefully that's going to change. We need women. Um, diversity inspires innovation, and and it's really important to have a great diverse group. I think to and it inspires people to have you know differences and and people to work with. No women doubt. tend to look at things differently than men, for sure. 
And I've found out through, through my life that it's usually the right way because I'm usually looking the wrong way. <laughs> you know. It's not always right. It, I just think it's different, right? And perspectives are different. And I feel that women, you know, they just solve problems differently. And it can be very inspiring. It can be. You know, and I, I love I wrote that quote down when you just said diversity inspires innovation. I think we got to. You know, we we need to put that in our show notes and just call that out, Krista. I mean, that is so true, and I, I've I've witnessed it firsthand with Eco Sy with the diverse group of of guests that we've had, mm-hmm. just the different perspectives of the world. You know, from from what they brought their their personal journey. So I appreciate you recognizing that, and you know, you mentioned mentors, and you said that mostly the mentors you you have are are male. But are there any mentors that you'd like to specifically recognize here today? I wouldn't say I've had one specific mentor that stood out more than others. I've had several mentors throughout my career, and I've learned something significant from each one. I think it's important to take lessons from each mentor and apply those in your career and in your life. Um, And like I said before, funny enough, most of my mentors have been men, but they've been extremely supportive and have always wanted me to succeed. And I think it's important to find people inside your organization and outside of your organization that you can lean on and create a strong network for yourself because you will have challenges throughout your career. And I think it's important to have peers and mentors that you can lean on and and go to for advice. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, have you had a chance yet, Chris, to, to, to be that, uh, that mentor or that voice to, to, uh, up and comer in industry at this point yet? Yes. I mean, we, we have several, we have several up and comers in our organization and I, I tend to connect with, with the younger individuals quite frequently and offer advice and, you know, take time when we could go have lunch, you know, one-on-one um, discussions and try and help them navigate their career and what they want to do and make sure that they're getting all the training and opportunities that, you know, will help them succeed. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's so important. And, and to be able to have a person like you, that someone coming into this industry that they can bounce ideas off and know they're getting an honest answer. I mean, hats off to you for taking that time uh, and investing it in others. And, uh, you know, one thing I love with this, with these episodes as well, we're talking about with, with the strength of women in engineering is, you know, there are a lot of myths out there, Krista, and you, you know, some of them, people, they have preceived conceptions of, of what women do in an engineering field, or if they walk into a room, uh, from a meeting standpoint to talk about a project or things like that. Is there anything you like to, this is your chance to, to debunk and just <laughs> kick that can or just knock it, knock it out the ballpark here. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are several myths. Um, but the one I think that frustrates me the most is that women don't work well with other women. Women not wanting to face competition for other women is nothing I've ever dealt with. There are definitely less women in industry and women sometimes disagree with one another, just like you would disagree with a man. But there seems to be this spotlight on the situation where you might disagree with a woman just because there's so few of us. But all women I've worked with across all the organizations um, have only guided me and been a great sounding board, even if we disagree on a topic. So we can only benefit from having more women in engineering and STEM fields because like I said, diversity inspires innovation and we need more women in industry supporting each other, being good examples and pulling each other up. So if you look at some of the recent events in history, such as the Me Too movement, you can see how strongly women can support each other and how effective we can be as a team. So I really think it's a huge myth that we that we don't work well together, that we're competitive with each other. Um, I, I just I don't I haven't found that in my experience. I agree. That's, that's, that's just a wrong state of mind out there and, and a strong driven woman. There, there's nothing, nothing better on your team than that, you know? So that myth of that they don't work well with other women. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you knocked that one out the park, Krista. So, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. So, you know, as you've developed in your career and you've grown, have there been any resources? You now you've mentioned you're a pretty big social media user, anything there that you'd like to point women to that have, has helped you in your career and your development that you find helpful? So some, some of my best resources, um, so I drive a lot and uh, I find that podcasts can be extremely informative, whether they're business related or just, you know, topics of social events or um, relevant history. TED Talks are awesome. TED Business, 
I love Oprah's super soul conversations. And I think you can learn something from each podcast, even if it doesn't pertain to your day-to-day job. Um, and you can find a, a way to utilize something you learned in your personal or your professional life. So love, love podcast, especially since I drive so much. There are several books that are awesome. And then some of the best resources I think that I've had along the way are our relationships. So I like to build strong relationships and help others as I progress. I think it's between 70 and 80% of people end up in their current position due to networking. And I think joining resource groups, whether that be employee resource groups uh, within your organization or groups like SWE, right, Society of Women Engineers, there's NAED, there's a lot of different groups that you can engage with in a meaningful way, not just a checkbox, but you know, volunteer your time and get involved. I think building a network around yourself is really important and having, you know, mentorships and peer relationships, all of those things help you succeed. No doubt. No doubt. Now I got to dig a little bit here. So podcast, which give me your top two, uh, (laughs) just business podcasts. We'll go business podcast first and then we'll talk personal podcast. So how about from a business standpoint, anything stand out? Obviously eco ass wise got to be on top of the list, but besides that. Number one, (laughs) Eco SY. <laughs> so I love uh, TED Talks. I love Eco SY, TED Talks, and TED Business. Um, I also love Oprah's Super Soul Conversations podcast. Um, and she's got a bunch of different various, you know, people. She had uh, Cheryl Sandberg on about a month ago. Just great conversations, very inspiring women that she interviews. Some of them, you know, I aren't great, but you, you can kind of pick and choose uh, through the podcast what you want to listen to. Absolutely. Now, how about books? Because I'm, I'm a big reader myself, personal development. I like pleasure reading, but also just business reading. Anything that uh, you read lately that you like to share? Yeah. So um, most recently, so the book Daring to Lead. So there's um, Brene Brown. Um, she does a lot of work around authentic leadership and vulnerability, you know, and just leading through authenticity, right? She has several books and I've read two. I haven't read them all, but Daring to Lead is one um, for leaders within an organization. Amazing. Uh, Another one, Daring Greatly is awesome. Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In, awesome book. Um, So I guess I tend to gravitate towards, you know, women writers, but get a lot of inspiration from the books. No, that's awesome. I mean, thank you so much for that. I'm going to check a couple of those out. Like I said, I love, love getting these ideas from the guests. And, uh, you know, and Krista, love to know a little bit of a highlight. If there's something that stands out in your career, you've had a lot of different roles and different organizations. Does anything stand out? <laughs> um, some, of, some of the things that stand out, I mean, I, I have had a lot of different, you know, different roles and different positions. I think my favorite position that I've had is the one that I'm doing right now. I absolutely love the sales manager role and leading a team and, you know, creating synergy with the team. Um, had a really great year of sales last year and, and, and made the circle of excellence. So that was awesome as a sales manager. But one of the, the biggest things I think that stands out, just, you know, something taking a step out of what I would typically be comfortable with was taking a chance you know, putting fear to the side and applying for the area sales manager role. So for me, that was, that was something me pushing myself, doing something different, not just, you know, a highlight, but, but it was really a a change point for me. No doubt. I mean, you know, obviously you, you crushed it and you're there now and you're, you're, you're moving (laughs) on. So, Hey, hats off to you. And, you know, when you're in that moment, Krista, where you're, you feel like you're doing the work you need that, we're born to do. And you're, you're in that moment of flow or just everything's just working well. What are you doing mm-hmm. in that moment? It's when I'm helping and when I'm making a difference, helping, connecting with others, connecting with my team, connecting with customers, solving issues for my team so they're able to go and, and do a more effective job and mentoring others. I think that's a huge part of you know what I love to do, giving back. I get great fulfillment uh, when I'm able to make a difference. Um, Because there's a lot of things that you do day to day that aren't extremely exciting, right? Forecasting and reporting and stuff like that. But when you're able to really make a difference and you're helping and and you're changing outcomes, for me, that's that's where I get the most satisfaction. So, Krista, wait a minute now. You don't like reporting and forecasting? (laughs) It's 
It's not my favorite, but it's part of the job. I thought everybody <laughs> but, loved like expense reports and things like that. Come on now. I know, I know. It's it's you know, it's just part of the part of the job. I think everyone everyone has to do it, right? There's always things you don't love and things you do love. So the things that you do love are always, you know, they stand out in my mind much more so than than the the menial tasks that you do day to day. So no doubt. I mean, and hats off to you for recognizing that you're happiest when you're helping people and when you're mentoring. I mean, that's going to just you're gonna impact so many people you already have uh, just throughout your career because you're focused, you know, on, on helping others. And, mm-hmm. and that's what great leadership's about, that servant leader mindset, you know. And I'd like to take a, a little bit of time and talk with you outside of work and just things that you sure. enjoy to do for fun. So any hobbies or, or, or interests that you have that you like to share? Sure. So I have I have several hobbies and, and interests, but one of my favorite things to do um, are home renovation projects. So DIY stuff. I like designing, working with colors, you know, redoing chairs or repainting stuff. Um, and we moved into a new house in Charlotte about a year ago. So over the past few months, when I've been solely working from home, I redid my uh, daughter's bathroom and repainted the cabinets, installed new light fixtures new toilet, painting walls. So, so I love, you know, redoing things and giving things new life and have to admit the walls are still not hundred percent done. It's my right. least favorite thing to do is painting, but um, the hands-on work for me is very therapeutic and, and I really enjoy the before and after transitions. Nice. Any other hobbies? Photography is another one of my big, uh, th- one thing I love. Um, I've done photography since I think high school um, where I was on the yearbook staff and um, it's just, always been something that I, that I love. So taking pictures and and being outside and it's been great, especially during this time when we're all, you know, at home. Yeah. It's a great creative outlet. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, the whole DIY and photography, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm talking with my family here and we, we basically live on the HGTV and watch all those shows. You know, I love HGTV. They're so addictive, you know, and they're, and and they're all the same, but different. It's just in the different personalities, flip or flop, you know, good bones. There's my wife. She can just talk to you about this for hours. You know, this is, (laughs) this is stuff we love and photography as well. It's awesome that you have that. I'll make my daughter pose for me from time to time. <laughs> there you go. Now, you mentioned a daughter. So, is there anything you'd like to share with us about your family? Sure, sure. So, I have a, a daughter. She's nine. Uh, she's going into fourth grade this year. So, it's been an interesting time to be homeschooling and, and balancing a career. I also have a husband. And uh, both he and I are in the industry. So, he works for Eaton. And uh, we've worked really hard over the past few months just to, to juggle parenting and work it's crazy behind the scenes, making sure our daughter is uh, doing her schoolwork, trying to remain sane, um, trying to keep somewhat of a schedule. Um, both of us seem to be jumping conference call to conference call. Um, it's definitely gotten a lot easier uh, now that summer break is here and we don't have all the Zoom calls for school. But yeah, it's definitely been a really interesting time. No doubt. No doubt. So you have a nine-year-old. I have a nine-year-old myself. So uh, fun times, right? <sighs> They're awesome. Yeah, it's a great age. Super fun. Um, but still somewhat independent. So it's an awesome age. Now you mentioned your husband works at Eaton. So, uh, so is that a, (laughs) is that a clash of the Titans at the dinner table? (laughs) It is not. He's, um, he's a, he's a district manager on the construction side. Um, and I'm on the industrial automation side. So we call on two completely different types of customers. He deals a lot with contractors. I'm calling on end users, OEMs, integrators, um, focused on industrial automation. So completely different technologies for the most part. So we have very little, little intersection at all. So let's just say it. You're just, you got the cool gig girl. So I mean, that's, that's, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Chris- hey, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with switch gear or anything like that. But, but when you can see automation in action and go into a facility, seeing how things are being made, some of the, we have some crazy software, um, that's being developed. It's just, it's really interesting to me, that side of the business. No doubt. No doubt. Now, I was just kidding to our friends at Eaton too. So <laughs> it's, it's all good, but it's, it's, I've really enjoyed this conversation, Kristen. And I know, you know, your story, you have so many different things you've done in your career. You're, you're inspiring others just by sharing this. And we love to, to kind of wrap up eco Why with the why, 
and and to get to the purpose. So why do you enjoy the path you're on? And you know, what drives you, Krista? Sure. I think there's two things that really drive me. First is I absolutely love what I do and I'm completely passionate about it. I remember from a very early age, uh, I don't know if y'all remember reading Rainbow. That was one of my favorite shows. No doubt. Um, <laughs> and they would take you into an industrial facility and show you how things are made. So I've always had just a passion for, you know, seeing how things are made, seeing automation and in, in, in progress. And, you know, that helps my drive. And if you love what you do and you enjoy it, it makes it a lot easier to do a great job. So I've always been really passionate about um, how things are made, seeing how things are made. Um, and it helps my drive because if you love what you do and you enjoy it, it makes it much easier to do a great job. Um, another aspect of what drives me is uh, wanting to be a great example for my daughter. Um, I see her watching me and mimicking me. So I'm very conscious about, you know, how my behavior impacts her. And I want to, if I want her to be brave and take chances and and make mistakes and feel safe failing, um, I need to do the same and lead by example. No doubt, Krista. I mean, for this episode, are you going to let your daughter listen to it? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I definitely will. My husband said he's going to be sharing it on LinkedIn, which will be <laughs> um, interesting. But yeah, I'll, I'll let her. I'll let her listen for sure. You know, I, I'm so grateful, Krista, that you came on and that you shared your story for with us and our listeners. No doubt, you, you're inspiring others. I mean, your passion, the example you're trying to set for your daughter. Uh, you know, the the. the point you made about diversity inspiring innovation i just i love that that was so good so i just really appreciate you taking the time with us on eco sy and and sharing your story and and the time we got to spend together so thank you so much thank you guys so much for having me this was awesome thank you for listening to eco sy this show is supported ad free by electrical equipment company eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.